Grace and peace. My name is Ryan. I'm a pastor and I watch movies. This is my YouTube channel. This time I watched the movie Richard Jewell. What struck me about the movie Richard Jewell is how real it seemed. And I started to think, why does it seem so real? What makes, I mean, I, many movies. I've watched a bunch of movies lately that have been based on real life events. I watched Just Mercy. I watched Bombshell. I watched Dark Waters. But Richard Jewell came off as just more realistic somewhere. What did they do right? Well, a lot of times when we watch movies, and a lot of times when we tell stories, we're telling stories about good guys and bad guys. And the stories have a sort of symbolic meaning. Uh, we associate them with good versus evil, St. George versus the dragon and there there are theological reasons for that we can get excited about that and uh and think about what they're saying and why and what that means in richard jewell it didn't really do any of that richard jewell our hero uh in some ways is kind of a saint george i mean he wants to protect people he wants to be a good guy be law enforcement but uh after the first act of the movie when he stops a bomb he's looking to save his own skin and he's not doing a good job of it either. He, he's kind of a, a schlemiel. You know, he's, he's always getting himself into trouble. And, and you, you find yourself saying, Richard, why are you, you know, why are you doing that? Why don't you just be normal? Because you're acting suspicious and, and you're bringing this upon yourself. And so he differentiates himself from maybe some other characters you're used to seeing as, as typical heroes in that way. In the same way, his friend Watson Bryant has kind of the opposite thing going on. He's doing the right thing and he's doing it in a reasonable way, but he's, he's kind of a schmuck. He's, he's just not a nice guy. He's lying about what happened to his practice. He's not successful. He's in over his head. Uh, and so he's not this, you know, this person that you want to tell your kids to be like either. There's nobody in this movie who's really like that. Richard's mom has her own weirdnesses and foibles and problems going on. She's an imperfect person. And the same is true of the antagonists, of the villains of the movie. Kathy Scruggs, she's, uh, she's amoral. She, she's willing to break moral laws by doing things like sleep with law enforcement in order to get the scoop but but her her goal is to get a scoop her goal is to get the truth out and i talked about in the movie bombshell uh my re my reflection on that why getting the truth out is a really good thing that's something christians should be cheering for and so she wants the truth out she wants the scoop she's doing a good journalistic work it's, it's the fifth estate, or, or whichever estate it is. It's, it's important stuff. And she doesn't know she's lying. And when she finds out she's lying, it, it hurts her. She, she cares. She doesn't want to be hurting Richard for no reason. She thinks Richard's the bomber. And, and she wants accolades for that. And so that's, that's pretty relatable. That's not somebody who's out to hurt other people. That's just somebody trying to do the best they can at their job. And speaking of doing the best they can at their job, we've got John Hamm's character, Agent Shaw. And Agent Shaw thinks Richard did it. It's very clear to him that Richard must be the guy. And if there's not evidence, there must be some explanation for the lack of the evidence, but we've got to stop the bomber. And so he's he's got his own... Uh, sympathy going on too. He's You can understand how somebody might be so misguided. He's a bit of a Javert, but, but he's not as demonic as Javert, even though he's doing tricky things. He is doing tricky things because he thinks that's what's going to protect people. That's what's going to keep another bomb from going off. That's what's going to make sure that the person responsible is imprisoned. Well, I, I think that made the movie, I, I mean, hat off to Clint Eastwood, because I think that made the movie a lot more relatable um, and, and a lot more enthralling, really, a lot more memorable. But I also think that it says something, and it says something kind of important about the nature of morality. 
you know, we tell stories and they're good versus evil and and that uh, that's what we like, but but we like that not because it's real. We like that because it's not real. We tell those stories because they are stories. And because when we tell stories about ourselves, we're biased. And so we always put ourselves in good light and other people in bad light. But the truth isn't like that, is it? In, in actual reality, when we face complicated problems and, and people struggle against people, there's no good people and bad people. There's just people, to quote uh, spies in disguise. Well, we ought to remember that. You know, Christians sometimes have been accused of saying that morality is binary. You know, it's, it's either sin or it's not. It's either of God or it's of the devil. And I think there's a lot of room in Christianity to start with the recognition that we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then to proceed from there to a place where we have enough love for our enemies to say that whatever it is they're doing, however wrong they are, however much they're hurting me, inside their own head, they've got some reasoning for it. And they think they're right, and I'm probably the villain of their story. And, and there's facts. There's absolutely facts. I mean, we don't have to give up on our, our right to be indignant about what's good and what's bad, but we also need to pay attention to the fact that nobody's trying to be bad and and everyone's imperfect and everyone is bringing some of this on themselves and and often when there's conflict between people it's multiple selfish motives multiple sinfulnesses that are bumping up against each other boy wouldn't it be nice if we could just get rid of all of that then we wouldn't have any problems anymore it'd be heaven on earth well I just, uh, I enjoyed this movie. If you enjoyed this movie that I just made, I hope you'll do some stuff down here in the doobly-doo. Do some likeies and some commenties and some subscribies. That'd be great, and I'll see you next time. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, t'will be.